you do want to back them up, but just not be the first ones to get inside, right? Exactly. <clears throat> Sweet. By the way, I, I just that's... started recording there. Right hey. when I saw that D100. Nice, nice roll. Nice roll, Squee. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You might not agree with me later, but <laughs> thank you. Mm. Whatevs. Um, all right, so what, what are we feeling, guys? Yeah, let them Dave, scout it out, though. And then we'll go in after him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Yep, I'm down with that too. Yeah. You fine with that, Lucas? Hmm. Yeah, he's good. I I would also like to make sure that the Naruni, which can be done really quickly over the radio, that the Naruni are okay. They don't have any injured or anything like that. They took a walloping, but they're still flying. Okay. So we'll get on the comms mm -hmm. between the Corsair ship and the Naruni ship there, Mr. GM. And after asking for a status update to make sure, you know, they're not leaking anything or half their crew is dead or whatever, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a plan that uh, both other captains might be happy with. Okay. Um you would get a status report from the Corsairs uh, saying, uh, hang on one second, actually. Um, I don't believe the Corsairs even had their shields punched, but let me be sure. Uh, nah, they were still pretty good. <clears throat> oh, they did have their shields punched, didn't they? Hmm. Can someone roll me a D100, please? Not yet. Oh, do it. Okay. Okay, do it, Lucas. It's already roll one. one. I'd rather not roll another. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, just just so you know, Firefrog uh, took us to school. Splagorth, our alien intelligences, are pretty much greater gods, so they don't need food. So maybe they don't have assholes. Ah, uh, uh, but one would think that perhaps they were not always greater gods. But... That perhaps. way, but but the other thing is that maybe they involved to not, like, eventually yeah. will evolve and not have wisdom teeth. Maybe they involved in assholes. Maybe it's still there. It's just useless, like our. Painting. Like you're, you're suggesting they have a vestigial asshole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I found my next Skype um Skype status for the next month. <laughs> Hooray! Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. <clears throat> wow. Anywho, so okay. you were looking up stats for the Corsairs. Uh, yeah, so... yeah. So no, I was just saying. So you get on the you get on the radio, and um, you find out that uh, okay. Now that uh, Piff rolled me that D100, could someone else please roll me one more D100? I'm sorry. Oh, I'll do it. Okay, good. Yay, 80 Club. <laughs> All righty then. Oh. Uh, so, um, you you call you contact both ships, and um, the Corsairs come in a bit staticky, and they say um, they they let you know that the overall ship is fine. However, they took a extremely lucky or well placed, hard to tell missile. Uh, from the Desperado that has damaged their sensors and radio. They can still use them, but they are at reduced efficiency. Mm, the okay. Naruni, on the other hand, let you know that while hull integrity is still um, mostly intact, they did have a minor hull breach in the engine room, which caused some havoc, and they are repairing it. However, they think their shields are going to be down until they can get to a dry dock to repair them. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there are no dry Ooh. docks here in the nebula. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's fun. Might as well be a desert. Yep. You know what really stinks, Xavier says, mm -hmm. is that we just took all this time, with the exception of the Corsairs, all the people with jade dragons just beat the shit out of, out of each other. There's still three other ships that want to kill us. Yeah, uh, there's... Fuck there's, you, Buffalo. There's <laughs> the ninjas, there's the wolfin, and what's the third again? The ninja, ninja bros. bros. No, there's there's the ninjas, the wolfin, and then what was the third one? Oh, I forgot. 
Uh, I'll let you know, out of character, no one has much information on them. It is a human captain of some type. Oh, okay. boy. Uh, wait, that makes no sense. There's not different types of humans. Um, you don't know much other than it is a human crew. I see. Interesting. Great. <clears throat> Anywho, well, one, one thing at a time. All right. So uh, since your sensors are kind of messed up and Naruni's shields are completely messed up, Maybe the star luck should sweep in and do a quick sensor check to guide you, uh, guide the Corsairs as to, uh, you know, to make sure the docking area, for example, uh, isn't surrounded by angry buffaloes and angry mm -hmm. friends of buffaloes. Cyber 6 will, uh, there'll be a pause and Cyber 6 will say, that'd be grateful. If you'd be willing, we'll make the boarding, um, considering that you're the only one here with shields and sensors. If you could mm -hmm. monitor the ship and the area around us and stay on guard while we board to get Buffalo. I'm on it. Okie dokie. Works for us. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of sensing and things like that, <clears throat> that mine in the, the the sensor in the middle, should we turn that off? Yeah, we probably should, honestly. Yeah, if it didn't already get blown to shit. But yes, let's turn those off. I mean, yeah, it is undamaged. Um, luckily, it was no one's target, and space is big enough that uh, it survived unscathed. So a simple uh, flip of the switch, and you can shut it down. Sweet. All right. Make it so. And as as you guys start mm -hmm. um, maneuvering, the Naruni start coming back because they had actually gotten some distance away. Um, yeah, they, they were really back. running. Mm-hmm. Uh, they start coming back to provide whatever support they can, um, and the Corsair ship starts to head towards the Desperado. <clears throat> you receive a broad, excuse me, broad range one way transmission. Um, Xavier or anyone who has read sensory equipment, um, actually, you know it. what? Xavier, roll me and um, Talavac, roll me. A check because even if you don't, you have read sensory equipment, don't you? Me no. Me yes. No no no. You're at tactical though. What were you? You were using hacking, so we'll count that. Roll me a hacking check. Okie dokie. And uh, Xavier, roll me a read sensors. Go 50-50 chance. Yay! I succeed okay. by 24. And my hacking was a failure by 15. Okay. <clears throat> Damn it. Xavier, you can pinpoint that this transmission is coming back from the direction of um. Oh, hang on. Let me pull up my notes because it has been some time. A uh, hoplite station, mm -hmm. which is where you guys um, started oh, from, yeah. where oh. you're supposed to return to. Yeah. Last time. This transmission yes. is um, uh, a very simple transmission. It says, note to all participants, mm -hmm. the jackal has returned to hoplite station with both a gold and jade dragon meaning there are now three of each kind left. Good luck. Wait a second. What? Wait a second. How is that possible? We have all the jade... We blew up everyone who had jade dragons. Somebody's cheating. No, Un someone made unless... a deal. Yeah, unless uh -huh. somebody made a deal, like the Splagorth gave away theirs for some reason, or oh, Buffalo know. gave away his. Oh, That's the only way. Has. That's weird. Buffalo might have. All right. Well, good for the jackals. Is that the wolfin? Is that the name of the ship, or is this that the name of the group? Squad? Uh, the, no, that's the name of the ship. The the corsairs, or actually the Narune, seem like they'd be more studious about bookkeeping. They would know that this was the name of the ship with the space ninjas. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh well. Shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm not that sad. I didn't want to meet the ninja bros. Talking to them would be infuriating, and fighting them would be dangerous. <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming, so I'll sweep in um, to get uh, within optimal sensor range, we'll say. Uh, sh should I need to do a pol pilot check in order to do that? No, Sweet because or... uh, you're, 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 unless, well, Unless you're wanting to get danger close, so to speak, no, no, you no, have just to. well, yeah. just optimal sensor range. No, 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 you're fine. That's that's. There's not like there's anything for you to run into, so you're good. I wouldn't make you roll for that. 
Okay, sweet. So then I guess the rest of it is up to Talavac. Uh, although I guess I can assist too, uh, using my read sensory equipment skill. So I guess Talavac and I will. Uh, I'll, I'll inform over, uh, you know, this uh, the ship's intercom, what the encoded message says for um, Isaac and Lucas. But head in the game, Tal. Head in the game. Okay. Yes. Get that scaly head in the game. Yes, I will. Hey. Okay. Hmm? Um. So. Uh, Talavaka, I'm going to have you make a roll in a second, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to describe what takes place. Um, <clears throat> Sweet. The Naruni take up position farther away than um, the Starluck, and they take position near the Splagorth wreckage. Um, the Corsair ship slowly pulls up alongside the Desperado, and starts to... Uh, and, and they're maintaining contact over the radio, so you hear Cyber 6 relaying what's going on. Um, he also says that unless anyone objects, they're going to keep the channel open. Uh, just in case there's a problem, you guys will hear it in real time and be able to react. Sure, yeah, no, open comms is a good call. Mm -hmm. So um, you hear him uh, talking to the pilot about docking the ship and uh, hacking into their docking protocols to force uh, a docking procedure, which is um, something we've never really covered, but it is possible to force a ship's docking procedures to connect with yours if you can break into their system at close range. Um, Talavac, you would be familiar with this mm -hmm. technique. It, you have to be very close to the ship, and you have to both be relatively unmoving, which... And uh, would, the, would it still be able to work if the shields were active, or probably no? No, exactly. right? no the, the shields would have to be deactivated. Um, it takes a few minutes to break into the docking procedures, but they are able to do so. And they slowly, the uh, docking gangplank, or whatever you would call it, the airlocks connect. And um, Cyber 6, you, you hear over the radio him giving orders. Um, they sound... Like, this is something they're familiar with, something they've done before. They all know their roles and positions. Cyber 6 barely has to give commands. And since that he his commands are minimalist because they don't need to be more, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, they approach with caution. They go enter in through the airlock. Uh, there's about a minute where Cyber 6 is talking to you guys over the radio saying, the lights are out. There's no sign of them yet. Everything's quiet. There's no booby traps around the airlock, which makes me a bit nervous. And then you start hearing over the radio gunfire. And uh, Cyber 6 goes up. Oh, that's them. Uh, one moment, Starluck, we'll keep you updated. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you basically, after that, you hear small arms fire and commands and um, general sounds of battle. Gotcha. Um, can someone else who has not yet roll me a d100? That would probably be me. Sure. Ah. 76. Okay. Um, very quickly, the battle is uh, joined and ended. It looks like from what you hear on the radio um, that you heard screams from what sounded like both sides. Hard to tell over a radio, of course. Um, but eventually Cyber 6 gets back on and says... Suspects subdued. Two of them killed, including that pilot of theirs and the big one. Uh, one of ours is severely injured, but if we get him back to the ship, he'll be fine. Buffalo and Scarlet are here, unharmed, oh. more or less. And then you hear something in the background, and then what sounds like a punch, and they go, okay, maybe a little I, bit. I hope you punch Buffalo and not Scarlet. She has a pretty face. Xavier says. There's a grunt, a mechanical grunt um, of um, could be acknowledgement, could be frustration, hard to tell. Okay. And Cyber 6 says they're subdued, we're on our way back to our ship now. Uh, Excellent. We have Buffalo's Jade Dragon, we're setting up scuttling charges now. Damn, these guys are really professionals. <laughs> 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 Shit. So during this, I have a crazy idea. After after everything is done, uh, Xavier's going to get on the comms with the Naruni. He's going to say, 
if you were to find get to a dry dock, say Hoply Station, how long would it take for you to get your shields back and operational? Perhaps a day or two. However, the rules of the engagement are quite clear. We cannot leave the nebula until we have both dragons or are content to be disqualified. Exactly. Our friends, the Corsairs, are going to, now that they have Buffalo, will be forthcoming with their gold dragon. My suggestion is we give you both the gold dragon, the jade dragon, and you get, you, you get yourselves back in operational. We wait a few days, and then we're able to hunt down the other gold dragon with full strength, rather than you being in a very precarious position. There's a pause, and then Aruni uh, ambassador says, well, there were no explicit rules about going back into the nebula after leaving, though it was my impression that would defeat the point. I do not know if we leave, if we would be allowed back in. <clears throat> see. There's another small pause again. It was never explicitly stated one way or the other. Well, I suppose none of us know, just bothered to ask. <clears throat> Indeed. And uh, if it was an important enough rule, I guess they'd say it, wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, we're being run by a criminal network after all. I'm sure they wouldn't mind some creative, you know, interpretations of ambiguous rules that aren't stated. Mm-hmm. I go for it. The, the after a small pause, the said the narrator goes. If you are willing to go through with this, it has no downside to us. If you, after all, are the ones that brought up the idea, we would not be in the violation of the contract. And if we are not allowed allowed back in, we already have our dragons. So it's really, the risk is all on your shoulders. True. True. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Let's assume worst case scenario. You get in there and you hit, hit the next phase, right? And you can't come back because they're not going to let you, all right? Then uh, we'll be both, uh, assuming that we are successful with our Corsair friends and getting another Golden Dragon. We should uh, make maybe just an understanding of each other that we could have just told you to stick with us and without your shields and a damaged ship and uh, kind of forced you to can contain your, well, or, yeah, pretty much force you to uphold your contract. And any previous engagements we would have in this nebula might have actually led to your death. But because we decided to be so lenient, perhaps that might be something you want to keep in mind when we enter the next phase. Mm -hmm. I consider this a reasonable agreement. I know from what I've heard in the past, there is no reason why we all can't finish and pass to become hunters. As long as the next phase does not pit us against each other, I think I would enjoy joining forces again. Good, good. But, uh, of course, you'll do your absolute best to get back into the nebula once your repairs are complete, correct? <clears throat> of course. Good. Xavier will double-check with everyone else and see if that plan works for them. I like it. I just we'll keep our fingers crossed that nothing happens in the meantime. Uh, out of character, <clears throat> that's exactly what I was going to suggest if you didn't yeah. come up with that. <laughs> so, yes, oh. I'm fully on board. <laughs> uh, sweet. But um, chances, chances have to be taken, so yeah. 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 The, the better Corsairs... have, it's better to have a full ally down the line than half an ally right now and they might die. Right? Yeah. yeah exactly. And we might have a full ally down, I mean, right now too, if we just wait a day or so. We still have the Corsairs with us. And since there's no longer any Splagor, they're not going to have problems engaging with anybody else. Mm -hmm. So we just sit tight and sit quiet. <clears throat> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, the Corsairs would get over the radio and turn and say, um, Cyber 6 goes, interesting little wrinkle there, fellas. Oh? Well, uh, oh, crap. Sorry, mind fart. <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> I forgot his name. 
Uh, if you said Mustang, I was going to laugh. But if yeah. What? Oh, yeah, if you yeah, yeah, say yeah, Mustang, yeah. That was his original name. Um, he goes, uh, Buffalo seems, uh, well, perturbed, but he never was very good at withholding information. Looks like uh -huh. this Blagorth never gave their jade dragon to anyone. It's probably either obliterated or floating in the wreckage out there. Ooh. Makes sense. I don't know why a Splagorth would ever make a deal to give up their only half of winning the game. So that means Buffalo gave up theirs? No, we have his in possession. So, Naruni, do you still have your Jade Dragon? Yes, we do. Do we still have our Jade Dragon? Yeah. Have we physically... Can we physically look at it? Yeah, you can verify it is still a board. It's on the dashboard of the ship. Yeah, I don't remember the exactly fuck? where you put it, but no one stole what it. The, then how the fuck did those ninja bros get a jade dragon? They must have made it up. They're cheating. I'd say it's a false signal if I had to guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell uh... like, did you want to have my opinion? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to have your opinion? Go fuck yourself. See, <laughs> last time I was asked, Talavac specifically said Isaac's okay with it. I just wanted to, I just want to make sure that it's okay if I asked or put in my opinion is all. <laughs> oh, That's well, you could, you could have piped up at any moment there, but they were. You know what, Lucas? So thought... Just. <laughs> well, what were you saying, Lucas? That the, what they're saying is a false signal. You're probably right. Wait a second. Let's check with the Corsairs and the Naruni. Did you get a signal saying that the uh, what's this ship called? The Raven? No, the the Coyote. Jackal. No. Jackal. The Jackal. Jackal. It's a Jackal. Um, did you guys get a coded uh, message uh, saying that the Jackal returned to the Hoply Station? Uh, Cyber Six comes on. Oh, it wasn't coded. It was quite easy uh, to read, and it seemed to be addressed to everyone within the Nebula. Yeah, I just oh, to show it, I... it generated from Hoply Station. So, whether it's a fake signal or not, whoever sent it is already outside of the nebula. Or it could have been a device still on Hoply Station designed to do that every X amount of minutes, Time. hours, whatever. Suffice to say, we, we, we don't really have anything to worry about. As long as we still have our dragon, that's the important thing. But yeah. um, what what uh, Cypher 6 said is interesting. It might be worthwhile to at least make an attempt at trying to visually finding that other jade dragon, the Splagors. If we can recover it undamaged, we might be able to use it as bait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a bargaining chip. Or a bargaining chip, you're right. Uh, we could always have both Buffalo's Jade Dragon and the Splagorse Jade Dragon and approach one of them and say, hey, two for one? You get two Jade Dragons for one gold, then you just have to get a gold dragon? Betray one of your friends or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. It might be worthwhile. It's a better plan than I have. Yeah. Oh, speaking so, of... Um, so, uh, this is a general trick um, deception is something that we've learned it's like 101 so generally if it is something that they're trying to send they're trying to have people think they're not around so keep your eyes out for the most part <clears throat> okay my eyes are always peeled except when I'm sleeping so it's like one of those tricks or... where, where, where you point off in the distance and say hey look at there and then you run <laughs> off, kind kind of like that. Kind of, yeah, okay. something like that. Okay, cool. So then, Squee, uh, are we? Um, will the Corsairs give up their gold dragon now, or are they gonna wait? No, um, the Corsairs have what they want, and they are going to stick around with you guys to the end of the uh, contest. Con well, not the contest, but this Agreed round of it. Yeah. Uh, so they will uh, quite happily give over the Golden Dragon to the Naruni and stick by you guys um, at the very least for the next few days until the Naruni get back. Um, they seem fairly confident they can control Buffalo and Scarlet until then. Something about uh, highly drugged. Ah. 
fun. Just something about that. <laughs> something <laughs> about drugging their fucking brains out. Ah, uh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Guys, do you need more drugs? Oh, God. Not that kind of drugs, Lucas. Oh. More of a oh. sleepy drug. Not a wakey drug like your cocaine. Oh, um... Squee? Mm-hmm. They they got their member to their ship, correct? Yes. Is uh, he going uh, however, to be okay? the Corsair is in critical condition, and um, the outcome is unknown yet. Um, I will offer my assistance if if they want it. Uh, sure. The Cyber Six would be like our. Uh, if you can help, by all means. Sure. So, how about the Starlock docks with the Corsair ship? Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac can play Doctor, and while he's doing that, we'll search for the Jade Dragon from the Spogorth explosion <clears throat> point. Yep. yep. Sound good? Sounds yeah. good. We do that! <laughs> we do that. All we right. would like to do that, actually. We would like to do that. Okay. Um. So... Uh, we'll do it this way. Dockings, no problem. No issues there. Uh, I will actually have Xavier, if you could, do a piloting check simply because you're docking with a ship that has faulty sensors. So it's going to be all on you to make the uh, delicate maneuvers. modifiers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make it easier by 20. It's not incredibly hard. Oh, sweet. It's 97 like to... or lower. Yeah. Hooray. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like you're trying to dock with something that doesn't want to dock with you, so... Hey All right, so you guys managed to dock just fine uh, and unload Isaac. Uh, let's handle, if you guys are okay, handle Isaac first real quick, and then I'll handle uh, you guys searching the Splagorth Yeah, range. that's cool. Sure. Not right. a worry. Um, Cyber 6 meets you at the airlock and uh, guides you over to what is their medical bay. Mm -hmm. And um, inside what you see is rather drastic. Um, one of the crew that you may have seen in passing but have never actually met, it's a, a small um, woman uh, with short brown hair, cropped short, kind of combed over to the left side. Um, she looks to be mid-30s, perhaps, mm -hmm. and she is wearing one eye patch over her left eye. Um, she has been quite severely wounded. They have her stripped down to her waist, and you can see... Well, actually, um, what skills do you have as healing? Well, um, my my actual skills is paramedic. Okay, That's yes. It. Roll me a paramedics check. Okay. Let's see. Paramedics. I beat it by 20. Okay. You can see what looks like a, um, a large gash. Um, starting from her in between her shoulder and her neck and traveling all the way down to her abdomen. If you were to Ooh. guess, it looks like a heavy object, like an axe or some other sharp object, were to had almost cleaved her in two. Jeez. Okay. She is unconscious. <laughs> um, they have managed to control the bleeding so far, but... Um, they don't have the um, anything to to heal her quickly. They have a machine working on her that is healing her like nanobots, but it's still doubtful whether or not um, it'll work quickly enough. Okay. Okay, so let's start this off with a psychic diagnosis. Okay. I think. Um, so I will roll 2d4. 2d4 and that is how many melees it'll take eight melees which is two minutes two minutes mm -hmm. to diagnose um and uh, can you read me the description of just so i know how much information to give you the psychic healer can sense physical pain damage disease and possession of uh with absolute clarity this pinpoint accuracy enables the character to suggest treatment or to conduct psychic surgery Okay, got it. 
So, uh, after two minutes of concentrating, here's what you, you find out. The nano machines have managed to uh, apply minor tourniquets to all the arteries so that she is not immediately bleeding out. Mm -hmm. However, they have not been able to control all the blood from such a large and um, just some, such a vast wound. Um, okay. In addition, all, all, many of the organs on the left side of her body have been ruptured. Um, until she is healed, for example, she won't be able to eat because the organs are not in working condition. The food would just kind of sit there and rot. Um, she might be able to drink a little bit, but um, basically, unless this is healed or handled, she will die of starvation before she can fully be healed. Um, okay. You can treat it if you have psychic surgery. Yes, okay. which I will do. Psychic, you can use psychic surgery to start trying to repair the damage. Mm -hmm. uh, 2d6. All right. So before I actually do this, I have to do... I have to enter a trance for 2d6 minutes, 7 minutes of preparatory meditation. Then I go ahead and touch her uninjured arm again and start the surgery. Um, this will take 14 ISP, which I will deduct right now. So I have 18 missing. Um, and I will start to basically suture everything together, start to move all of the organs together, and psychically um, stitch them together, essentially. Okay. Uh, is there any sort of uh, role involved with psychic surgery? Uh, yes. Um, are they... Recovering from a coma. They are currently in a coma, so... Okay, so recovery from a coma near death is equal to treatment from a hospital, 1 to 66. So I need okay. to roll a 66% skill roll. Got it. So... Hooray, psychics! I succeed by 24. Okay. So... It takes you, because of the extent of the damage, it's going to take you about an hour to mm -hmm. complete your work. Um, and wh by the time you're done, uh, while you'll still have plenty of ISP left, you are going to be um, uh, mentally and somewhat physically drained simply by the sheer amount of concentration that you have been exerting. Yeah. Uh, but you are able to repair all of the arteries and all of the internal organs, and you are able to not completely close the wound, but seal it or uh, uh, knit it together enough that it will heal on its own. She will be out of action for at least two to three weeks, but you have saved her life. All right, then I will do one final thing. Okay. I will burn six more ISP to close that wound fully using Healing Touch. So I enter another trance for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And healing touch is the ability that can instantly heal cuts, burns, bruises, and similar physical wounds. So okay. it's basically just the... Everything is closed together and sort of kind of knitted, and this just right. finishes off the job. Got um, it. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. After you do so, the flesh underneath is pink, as if it was new. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that she is breathing easier. However, she is still unconscious, and... Um, uh, you will know that she is she's not in a coma, but she is going to be fading in and out of conscious at least for the next few days. She's going to be exhausted and hungry because um, I don't know how Rift handles it, but to me it just makes sense to handle it this way. The healing that you're doing is partly stimulating her body to heal itself, mm -hmm. which is a huge drain upon her own physical form. So um, she's going to be ravenous, and exhausted for several days at least. Um, your healing touch, though, has made it so that her recovery would be um, more due to exhaustion than physical wounding. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will tell um, Cyber Six about all of this and say she will be fine. He will um, let out a, a simulated whistle of appreciation, and uh, he'll say that's uh, quite a handy. Uh trick you have there I'm grateful no tough worries. little thing she uh, killed the big one even after suffering that wound I'm glad to see that she didn't pay for it too dearly damn um, 
we will, of course, honor our bargain, and I am... I was not sure about risking the lives of millions to come to your aid, but I think that I uh, made the right call. Thanks. All right, well, I'm going to go lay down because I'm exhausted after that. Uh, of course, and uh, he'll lead you to a place where you can lay down. All right. And on to the other group. Hi, that's us. We're the other group. We're amazing. We uh, have a ship. You are. The and stars. Yes, you do. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that last one, though. Um, I like it when God agrees with me, if only that worked in real life. <laughs> <laughs> then it'd be a commandment yes, to eat ice cream all day. That'd be um, so sweet. Anyways. Uh, how would you guys like to go about doing this? Like I mean, um, I, I I I can I know some guidance for me might be necessary, but I'm curious if you guys have a plan of action or any clever ideas or anything like that you'd like to approach. This I have one potential clever idea. Mm -hmm. You said that there are no ship sensors that could te detect something so small, uh, like that dragon statue, correct? Correct. Well, we have special sensors, and I know they're they're broad, uh, they're they're uh, that we got from, um, you know, that we've been using, right? The little ball things. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. someone has a skill, and we could like we could adjust it, or change its hardware, so it could. So instead of doing a really big, long signal throughout all the space, we program them for a much more concentrated sweeping area looking for something much smaller, you know? Okay. That would be possible. I have a few questions, though. Okay. Um, what would you be calibrating it to look for? Because if you think about sensors, radar um, wouldn't uh -huh. be very helpful because even if it picks it up, you're not going to pick up more than just an object of yay size. And I've got a great idea. Well, we, okay. we, mm -hmm. well here's, here's an interesting idea. Okay. We don't want to pick up things bigger than the Jade Dragon, and we don't want to pick up things smaller than the Jade Dragon. But we know exactly what the dimensions of a Jade Dragon are, which is, well, we have a Jade Dragon, right? So, why don't we configure it so it has a threshold, a high threshold and a low threshold, and it'll scan a bunch of stuff like a radar, right? But it'll only filter out results that meet the J Dragon size threshold. I assume that you're uh, referring this to me, right? Yes, in yeah. character, yes. Yeah, in character, yes. All right. But right now, out of character, I mm -hmm. mean, this has to be physically possible first, as ordained by our DM, before I even begin to talk in character, right? Yeah, right, right. But I would just like, if you had that idea, you're conveying it to me in hopes of mm -hmm. it being away. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yes, I would say with sufficient skill that such a thing could be programmed. However, I will Wait. caution that um, the effectiveness will, of course, partly depend on the skill check, but it will also be limited by uh, um, if I, if, now if we think about this realistically, we can set okay. it to a threshold that will look for objects the size of the J Dragon, which is a great idea. Um, oh, okay, however, thank you. I'm amazing. By the nature of radar, um, the object has to be pinged. So, for example, if there are yeah. large pieces in the way, or if there are large pieces touching it or next to it, it will model the reading. So, again, yep. it can be incredibly helpful, but it is also not it's exactly... It's not a guarantee. Exactly. But I think it's better than visual inspection in fucking space, that's for I, sure. I, 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 I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there any way I can calibrate the sensors to pick up Jade? Does Talavac know the molecular composition of... Actually, wait. Mm, I have to think here. Um, first of all, I have to think of what kind of sensors are on this. If it's yeah. radar, then no. There's just no way, because radar doesn't it's care what it's made out of. Else, um, yeah. I don't yeah, think these probes kind of are. These are, just, these are just... Uh, if we're talking about the probes that you've been dropping around, yeah. um, those are just radars that detect when things are moving in the area. Tonight, that's when Stipe got it. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, it's better than nothing. That's for sure. So if it's behind a big metal something or right, right up next to a big metal something. Yeah, I know, but there's gotta be luck, a way. But we you know what? There's a good chance we weren't gonna find it anyway at that point. So it's worth a shot, I think. 
is there any way I can just toggle with the systems that we have on the ship? Maybe I could like narrow down, you know, the search or something. I hate to just give up on this, you know. Um, well, your ship sensors are not delicate enough to do it. Um, the only reason uh, why you can do this at all is because the little satellites uh, could be um, possibly calibrated to do it. Yeah. Uh, Programmed. Yeah, that's a yeah. good way. Uh, and basically what you would be doing is the instead of it doing a 360 sweep, it would be programmed into a very narrow beam that would literally like sweep back and forth. Uh, it would take yeah. a bit of time, but assuming you the modifications work, it, it is feasible. All right. Well, can we uh, retrieve one? Well, you have plenty. You don't have to retrieve oh, it. Oh, okay. We have tons of them, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can tweak one. So while you're trying to tweak that, Xavier will ask Lucas, do you have any magic something that could help uh, sense or find something like this? Hmm. <laughs> if it was alive, yes. No. If that was close enough. Hmm. Um. Can I? No. Maybe. That'd be dumb, but so funny. Um, <laughs> Xavier's gonna look to the side a little bit. Wanna wanna let me in on that internal conversation that you're having there, Lucas? Well, so technically, I do have a spell that allows my pies to home in on something. Okay. <clears throat> if I direct okay. it towards a jade dragon, uh -huh. I technically, if I was in range, could have it seek it out for me. What's the range on it? Uh, 100, 150. Oh. Hmm. That's that's nothing in space, unfortunately. So your pie would only go 150 feet? Yeah. Well, I mean, as you said, it is space. But then again, it is magic. It so is space, it. yeah. I, well, I don't know shit about magic. Okay, well. It has its own rules. Be... It likes to play things. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Xavier says. All right. Well, if you think of anything else, let us know. But we're gonna. We Televac is tinkering around with uh, the probe. See if we can't figure out a, a threshold in which to find a very specific sized object. So, that's kind of our best bet. So that's what we're gonna go with, I guess. Unless you can think of anything else. No, oh, no. Did I could go out there and look by eye if you'd like. Uh. Wait, does the star like have any windows, or like I guess you should say, because windows are made of glass, like transparent sections of the hull? Yeah, not many, but it does have some. Obviously, it has the viewpoint at the in the cockpit. Yeah. Um, the mess hall has one, and um, each of your rooms has a small like porthole. Okay. Uh, Xavier would say, well, you can always come up with the cockpit with me, and while we're flying around, you can you can. See if you can't spot something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there we go. We have two. Well, at least at least we have two routes. We we're gonna be doing the visual route, and we might have these probes. So that's something. So I think that's how we're gonna handle this, Squee. Okay. All right. So first things first, Talavac. Um, what are you going to use to try and alter the probe? I was going to disassemble it and try to hook a UBS or any type of port into one to display upon the computer screen and try to recalibrate what it can detect. Okay. Mm -hmm. That can definitely work. So you're like you're work. changing the software. That's kind of yeah. neat. Mm -hmm. That can definitely work. However, I will also need a skill to disassemble it because it is a complex machinery, and if you don't know what you're doing, how does one disassemble? Oh, well, it, I'm... Uh, Talavac puts down the rock he had in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, because the, the thing is, is that um, you once you can get into the computer parts of it, yeah, you'll be good to go. I mean, you can, you, ah. you'll, you'll, you'll be in familiar territory. Ah. But, uh, how, uh, do you know how, would Talavac know where to even go to do such a thing? On yes, such a I would. Yes, I would. Because uh, a long time ago, I had a uh, heart 
teach me about them. I asked her That's about right. them. right. I remember yep. that. Yep. She told me all about them and how they work. Wait, and the how heart's still on our ship. Mm -hmm. No, wait. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fucking love have a heart open up. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but yes. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, no, no, Televag really wants to do this. Let him go. You yeah. know what? I've been failing so much, I just need to feel like I need to redeem myself. Uh... But uh, but to you make things probe, easier, you're not going to redeem anything. We're going to hate you. Okay, <laughs> this is what like, I'll do. There's the guy who broke our probe. Let's all boo at him. Uh, this is what I'll that. do. I'll have Hart disassemble it, expose its core, then I'll take over from there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, shall we roleplay this then? <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Uh, so Hart is uh, pretty free at the moment. Your ship didn't suffer any damage that she can repair. Uh, you only suffered. Um, I think you had some scoring on your mega damage hole, but no systems or anything were damaged, as far as I remember. Okay. Um, look, uh, look for it. Uh, would she be in the engine room or something? Or... Yeah, she'd be in the engine room. She's actually. You actually. Oh gosh, yeah. You'll actually find her and Seamus still on battle uh, alert stations, ready in case something uh, happens, because no one's bothered to tell them uh, that you're not still fighting. All right. I walk in. I'm like, okay, you can you can relax for a minute. You can relax for a minute. It's cool. Um, Hart, um, can you come over here for a second, dear? I need to ask you a question. Sure. Uh-huh. And then she'll, uh, like, as she walks away, she does this weird, like, lean back to the, uh, <laughs> towards uh, Seamus. So she's walking while leaning backwards, and she goes, she called me dear. <laughs> um, I hold up a, a probe. I'm like, I forgot how to access this. Could you take that apart for me so I can get to its core, please? That would be, that would be great. Oh, Sure. And she'll pull out a, like a little Swiss Army type screwdriver system that she'll carry on her and takes her just a few minutes. She uh, unscrews a few panels, moves aside a few wires, and then says, uh, computer access right there. Okay, I'll watch that, how she did it. Do you think that uh, would, I, would I retain that knowledge to do it again so I wouldn't need her? Well, what's your IQ? My IQ is a... Let's see. That's a good question. Where am I? My IQ. Damn it, where's everything? Oh, okay, here it is. Uh, 14, sorry. Well, still above average. Uh, tell you what. Roll me a d20. Make under 14. Okay, d20. Gotcha. Oh, no. You 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 think that you might be able to do it again, but it wouldn't be a sure bet. Okay. So, like, you know, you you at least have uh, the right you you know where to start, and you might be able to do it again. But uh -huh. uh, in game sense, you'd have to make a check for it as opposed to just being able to do it. You know what? It's not a big deal. I can mm. learn this later. It's open, so yes. I can go ahead and start working on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll plug your computer into it to get to the software. Yeah. And uh, while you're doing that, you'll see uh, Hart rocking back and forth on her heels going, what you doing? <laughs> I'm recalibrating this probe so we can find something out in space. Something in very, very particular. I'm just hoping that this works. What's that I mean? She points to the monitor. <laughs> I'm trying to find a little dragon. Uh-huh. What's that mean? <laughs> uh... A little dragon we need for our little game. She play. shakes her head and like literally turns your head to the computer display and points to a symbol on it. What does that mean? What is she pointing at? I'm not I, I just, it, yeah. it's, 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 it's it. some <laughs> symbol of um, hacker code. Oh, that's. I'm I'm, I'm, work, I'm just I'm just trying to get this to work. Oh right right. Yeah. It's just it's gibberish right now, but it'll make sense if I can get it to work. And then she'll rock back and forth on her heels a little uh, bit after uh -huh. a few minutes. So how's it going? I'm I'm good. I'm good. And the whole time I'm just typing and looking into the computer screen, you know? I'm All like, right. I'm I'm good. Yeah. Roll me a computer usage check at a um minus five percent due to distraction. Oh God. Okay, computer uh, uh, minus five. You said. Yeah, minus five. Okay, this will be funny. All right. 
as Hart so often goes, uh, what's that? What's I, this? I did it. I, I had a 70% a 70 chance. Okay, nice. <laughs> so despite uh -huh. Hart's pestering. Um, okay, so that is a success by how much? Oh, uh, 54 from 70, that's roughly 20-something. I don't know. Well, well, consider the 5% negative, so you're looking at 65. Mm. So you're looking at a success by 11. Okay. Which is decent. All right. Um, you were able to set the probe to um, scan and find objects. The threshold, you can't get it perfect, mm -hmm. but you get it to be... Um, it'll pick up anything that is... Um, at least three quarters the size of a jade dragon, mm -hmm. and no bigger than um, one and a half size is the time of the. Excuse me, the size of the jade dragon. All right, I'm like, I lean back. I'm like, oh, this might work. I just stand up and uh, hook everything back up again, and uh, hand the probe back to back to Hart. I was like, reassemble, please. Aye, aye. And she just uh, <laughs> quickly uh, reassembles it. Okay, and um, I just I go over to her, and I just I put my hand on her shoulder. I'm just like, thank you. You're an invaluable asset to the team. She goes, aww, <clears throat> I know. And then she starts skipping back <laughs> off to the engine room. I just smirk a little bit, and then I go back, and uh, I want to uh, send this probe out. All right. I'll guide yeah. the ship to uh, the center of the Splagorth wreckage. So the probe can be deployed. Okay. So, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll make this mostly a flavor text thing um, yeah, I, to save some time. I love flavor. <laughs> <laughs> um, you deploy the probe, and it starts scanning the wreckage. Um... And it starts reading back several objects that, that, that match within the parameters. And um, using that, you guide the ship to the... The ship has a giant, like, spotlight on it. Mm -hmm. And you very slowly move the ship along, uh, looking at the items that are picked up by the radar. Um, most of the things that you are seeing are just pieces of ship or uh, equipment or body parts um, that happen to be similar in size. Um, could somebody... Let's see here. Give me a second. got to think. <laughs> oh, Come man. on, big money, big money, big money. I have to recalibrate one to find fucking Splurgorth anus. Oh, boy. Um... Let me think, because you succeeded. I'm trying to see. Okay. I am going to give this, given the size of the wreckage and uh, the fact that you succeeded, but not fantastically, um, this is going to be a 50-50 shot. Mm -hmm. So, who would like to roll? I've done enough. Somebody Lucas, else you're, you're, you're our mascot. You roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Wait, wait, wait. What? Y you didn't say high or low. I don't uh -huh. know. I thought it was just 50%. Wait, come on. Okay, the okay, skill okay, check okay. is always I... low. <laughs> well, this wasn't a skill check, but okay. I, if you guys, it, as long as everyone was under the impression it was low, I'm fine with it then. Yes, um, yes, we were. All on board. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be <laughs> quite that fast, but we're good. So. To be yeah. honest, I wasn't really paying attention, just saying. <laughs> we... Um, You, after about half an hour of searching. Um, so it takes about 15, 20 minutes to get the device running. So about an hour after you dropped Isaac off, mm -hmm. uh, your spotlight comes across something that flashes green. And uh, when you get a little closer and you get a lock on it, you get a bead on it, you see um, that the half of the jade dragon is singed black. Uh, -huh. uh, the back half, but you see the jade head. That's so, all we need. That's it. You, you see, the whole thing is still together, but yeah. the jade head is still green and flashes in the headlights. It's still a green dragon. Yeah. Yay! Ha yeah. <laughs> ha! Yeah, I finally did something. All right. 
<laughs> Stevie Roloch can be like, Televac, we gotta work on your self confidence. You're never gonna steal anything with an uh, attitude like that. Uh, well, I'm hanging out with greatness. It's hard for me to come up to that bar, you know, level. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry, Lucas. Uh, your opinions do matter. Uh, I just get impulsive sometimes. So, uh, are we good? We good. Okay, cool. All right. No, are we good? So I say okay. we retrieve the dragon, and then we retrieve our cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that. Your opinions matter. So we good? We're good. We're good, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're good, we're good. <laughs> so, yes, um, it, 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 someone would have to jump into an EVA suit and go acquire it. Um, however, I'm sure there are some of you that have skill to do so. I have an idea for yep. this ship. Okay. And before anybody gets into an EV suit, I'm like, we have to install some extendable arms on this thing. That would come in really handy. But until then... Really? Yeah, but it would, out of character, it would probably make us slower. Uh, I'm not talking like massive arms. I'm just talking like something, like a little, just the something to pick something out of the space because it's weightless, you know? Glue R2-D2 on the ship so that he can use his little prongs. Yeah, to, to a certain degree, no. yeah, you know? I'm just looking Anyways. for a so no one has to go out into space and risk their lives over a junk, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I suppose, yeah. Although, uh, sweet to answer your question, uh, hmm. Xavier does have pilot EVA and zero G movement in, in combat. So, if uh, at the very least, I, uh, Xavier can do it, but uh, others can do it too. But... Okay. Um, sure. I, I um, uh, again, I, I think unless anyone doesn't want to, I think this could be handled in a more narrative sense. Yeah, oh, yeah. Narrative. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, let's just talk about it rather than role playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you're able to retrieve the Jade Dragon. Uh, once you get it and you can look at it closely, you can see that the back half of it has several cracks in it um, due to the explosion of the ship. But other than that, it does seem whole and unharmed and looks like an exact replica of the Jade Dragon you have, with one exception. On the bottom of it is etched a different um, set of coordinates, which denoted about where the Splagorth started this adventure or this uh, round. I just thought of something. Okay. Oh my oh. god! I just thought of something. What? How crazy would it be if we were to, after we get our other, our our second gold dragon, because we're giving the first one to the Naruni, and we show up at the station with all of the other green dragons and our gold and green. <laughs> Just like, bam, we did this. Sup? <laughs> Gotta count for something, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what it would do? It would eliminate two other competitors for the next round because there's no way they'd be able to get it. Yep. Yep. We can't go to the ship without the Jade Dragon. Jade Dragon's at the sh uh, on, on, uh, sorry, on Hoplife Station. They can't go to Hoplite Station until they have the two pieces. They'll never get the two pieces. We can also destroy them, too. But uh, So it would yeah, basically no, be just good. us and Naruni. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's a wonderful thought. Okay. Yeah. All right, anyways. Sorry yeah. about that. No, 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 no. no it's, it's good thinking. Okay, so now I have to decide what we want to do next. I say we try to hang tight not to create any more um, not to actively seek anything out until we know for sure that the Naruni are going to come back or not right can you guys hear me yeah I, yeah, I, I fully agree oh, Okay. I'm sorry I just veered off for a second <clears throat> no. okay. um, like you, I'm pretty sure you collect Isaac and you will see that he is extremely yeah. tired um we get the J Dragon over to Naruni. Naruni head over to the station, and we try to lay low. Oh, dragon, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Power down and let these shields regenerate. Yes. Not yes. not yeah. here. I I would almost want no, to say here. somewhere not, else. No, not where all the yeah, not where all yeah. the explosions happen. Well, whatever. But we still need to lay low somewhere. Yeah. 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 We'll just mm -hmm. find. We'll just pick a random sector. Go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then turn all non-essential off. Yeah. So 
Sounds good. GM, All right. we have a plan. Yes, you have a plan. <laughs> uh, the Corsairs uh, follow suit with you. Um, mm -hmm. They plan on using the time uh, to try and repair the sensors as best they can. Mm -hmm. um, the Naruni take the gold dragon from the Corsairs and, of course, attach it to their green dragon. And uh, as, Well, before they go, the Naruni would request um, whoever wants to uh, from the Corsairs and the uh, Starluck meet them aboard their ship, since this might might be the end of the treaty. Uh, they felt it would be good to have a, uh, a proper send-off, though they do stress, of course, that they're going to do everything they can to make it back. Uh, plus, they also have to. You have to do the exchange of the gold dragon. Yeah. Um, so the Corsairs go aboard. Does anyone from the Starlet go aboard? I'll go aboard. Yeah, hey, I'll go aboard too. Yeah. If I recall correctly, I'm not too sure if they would be willing to share that inf information now, but um, they were going to tell Isaac about something. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The uh, okay. So you go aboard. And um, the first thing you see is that um, when you enter the ship, you see that it is very white and very sleek and very smooth. Um, hang on. Let me see if I can get a picture that does a good job. Because I have an idea in mind. And let me see if I can find this for you. Um, sure. This is the Corsairs, right? No, this is the Naruni ship. Naruni, ah. Yeah, okay. the Corsairs and the Naruni ship inside are very similar. Oh, okay. I got confused for a second. Okay. Yeah. From from the description, it seems very similar. <laughs> Although I'm willing, um, I'm willing to bet that um, it, it's slightly different. The Naruni probably have actual what looks like plates, but um, Corsairs have a lot of different things that fit together so perfectly that it looks like one amalgamated thing yes yeah. that is a big thing so take a look at that that is a good uh picture of what it looks like inside um the oh, okay where the corsair is oh. like you said it almost looks like the uh, inside of the corsair was one giant mold yeah um, mm -hmm. so there's no seams there's no apparent bulkheads or or uh, hatches or anything like that this is just um very clean, I guess, is the way to look at it. Okay. Um, everywhere you look, the every device that you see that you recognize looks cutting edge. Let me give this um, to the chat really quickly. Oh, I gotta check out their hardware. Oh my god, and the software. Um, the uh, the crew, uh, as you pass, looks at you but doesn't acknowledge you, other than to just follow you with their eyes. And uh, you're invited to the bridge, which is uh, very open, given the size of the ship. It's a, a circular room with a raised dais uh, with enough room for about five or six people to stand uh, with a chair at the top of the dais and the bridge crew below them. Um, and you're invited up on the dais. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Naruni ambassador I, I i don't know what her title would actually be but given the circumstances we'll say ambassador that'll work she says um after they uh the corsairs get uh, cyber six gives her the golden jade the golden dragon she connects it with the jade dragon and you see that it fits perfectly um so well that it looks as though someone had taken a whole jade dragon and simply painted half one color and half the other right um and when it clicks together, the gems on either side uh, begin to sparkle. Uh, and she goes, well, this was a very advantageous accord for all of us, it would seem. Mm -hmm. Oh? Well, she, sh shakes, she tilts her head to the side. Perhaps I misspoke. It has yet to bear much fruit for you which hopefully we can rectify. Uh, however, if this were to be the end, if we were not allowed back in to help you and you and the Corsairs are to continue on your own, I would feel amiss since we are getting what we need and the Corsairs have gotten what they need and you have yet to receive much of benefit. Mm -hmm. 
I do believe I promised to tell you, and she points to Isaac, something about your father. At the very least, I could give you that information so that, no matter what else, you did gain something from this alliance. Mm -hmm. Your father is what is known as an Atlantean, a race of powerful beings who are rare and travel through dimensions and time. I do not know too much about them. As I said, they are not common, but I do know that they used to be very influential thousands of years ago. There was some climactic occurrence that killed many of them, caused most of them to go into exile. They have special abilities, which is why I asked you the questions I did. You share such abilities, meaning that you are an Atlantean, and by nature so must be your father. Isaac is quiet for a long time. I'm I'm not human? No, though from my understanding Atlanteans share very many similarities with humans. But you are bigger, probably stronger, will live longer, and you have special abilities that no human possesses, such as the ability to sense certain creatures when they are near. And I nod, like, yeah, remember? I would also caution you. Though I would caution anyone against having dealings with Splagorth, you especially, the Atlanteans and the Splagorth have had strained relations. Some Atlanteans work for them, but they are highly sought after by Splagorth for their ability to use tattoo magic. If Splagorth know that you are Atlantean, it might cause complications for you. Okay. I... I I don't think that'll be too big of an issue. I'm kind of frightened of the bastards. I don't know why. She smiles and she says, aren't we all? I cannot tell you where your father is, but I have given you enough information, hopefully, to at least begin your search. I do not know where other Atlanteans can be found, but there are many cities in this great universe that might contain such information. And if you can find others like yourself, they might be able to help you. Thank you. As I said, it is... A small <clears throat> penance, given what we have gained already. We will go and make repairs. We will also try to outfit with extra weapons and armor, though I doubt Hot PlayStation has spare missiles lying around. We will do what we can. If we cannot get back to you, we will find a way to send word and provide any support that we can, limited though it may be, from Hot PlayStation. Okay. All right. And as your friend, and she kind of nods to Xavier, suggested, if the next round of this competition does not force us to pit ourselves against each other, I would welcome working together again. Good. Same here. Mm -hmm. The Naruni do not often make such contracts. They are seemed... They are deemed risky. I am glad that this has not turned out to be the case. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Well, you know, every exception sort of proves the rule. Mm -hmm. High risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. Once again. She will uh, then turn to Cyber 6 and she will say, I know of the war between your people and the Splagorth. 
I know who you are and where you're from, and I want to tell you, it is not lost to me what you did and how dangerous it must have been for you. I cannot speak for my company, but if you are ever in this... She looks at you guys and then kind of stops area again, and you have need of help, I will do what I can. Cyber Six tilts his head and uh, tips his sombrero and says, well, good day. I believe we should be getting back to our ships. I give a small nod and uh, and slowly start to, to walk away. Yeah, go back to the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll just pat Isaac on the back and I just like to look at him just like, you got some. You, 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 you know more. So, you know, it's good. I'm not human. <clears throat> Well, take a look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that it, it's obvious that you're not. He's human, got but... you there, Isaac Xavier yeah. says. Um, we can talk about this on the ship. We can. Talk... I'm not human. Yes. I. Yep. Uh... I've gotten <clears throat> used to it. Okay. I'm not human either. But th this is not the time or place. So yeah, let's just head back to the ship. Can, uh, out of curiosity, Squee, would a, a lore galactic alien check, uh, regardless of how difficult it might be, would that even help, um, figuring out what the heck, you know, Atlanteans are, or are they yes, just that rare? It, it that, would. No, that they're standard? not, no, they're not like boogeymen, um, they're just not common, so yeah, uh, do, uh, give me a galactic lore check. Okay. Uh, roll 1d100. <laughs> Uh, I fail. Okay. <laughs> I fail by a poop load. Uh, 30. Oh, you failed by... Okay. Uh, you have not personally heard of Atlanteans. Okay. That's fine. That works for Is me. Is there anyone else who has the skill that would like to make the check? I don't have that. I've already made the check in the past, and I do know of Atlanteans. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, that is correct. Because <laughs> okay. Dude Man Look was an Atlantean. Um, Lucas, give me one more galactic skill check, though. Okay. Galactic lore check. Oh. Okay. Balls. So you know of Atlanteans. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But uh, the conversation has not sparked anything else to your mind or anything like that. I'm assuming that I'm still on the ship waiting oh. for them to come back. Oh, that's right. You didn't come. Okay. Well, then never mind. You you, you did not fail the role you didn't do. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Mind blown. No, you'll, that still will count, though. Um, okay. So you guys uh, head back to the ship. Um, the mm -hmm. Corsairs... Um, you guys kind of walk together to the airlock, and then um, your airlocks are on opposite sides of the ship. So as you get to the other side of the airlocks, uh, Cyber Six will tip his hat to you and say, well, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Halfway there. Better than we did when we woke up this morning. He nods. Plus, you know, we're all alive. He nods again, and he goes, you know... Might have missed you, Colin. You guys might have made good Corsairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that goody two shoes, though. I could. You don't know us well enough. Yeah. Uh, later, but we'll take what you said as a compliment. Yeah, we can. He, he, he laughs at Talibak's response. <laughs> he goes, "Goody two shoes." Mm. Huh. It's nice to be considered that for a change. Well, gentlemen, see you on your ships. Yeah. You bet. And uh, the <laughs> us Corsairs, LOL, 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 LOL. Uh, Last time I checked, Corsairs didn't, didn't, didn't hide a uh, fucking pirate merchant just so they could sell to him later on down the road. <laughs> uh, I would say that there are many Corsairs of many colors and breeds. Sure. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, their reputation, at least. <laughs> <laughs> <Not really. laughs> um, so, uh, the Corsairs board back upon their ship. The Naruni hyper um, uh, do faster than light travel towards Hoplai Station. And you guys move to some random or... Actually, no. It shouldn't have to be random. Um, Why not? 
Well, they close their eyes, point at the right. screen, and say, there. <laughs> it can be random yeah, if you exactly. choose. Yeah, I'm just saying that. Uh, get one of those guns with the little suckers on oh, the end geez. and shoot it at the screen. So, right. um, I, I'm literally going to close my eyes and randomly po poke a point on the screen. There. Okay. <laughs> my vote is that we go to that one. Because <laughs> I randomly selected it. <laughs> Sure. We don't have that to. That one really looks don't. nice. It, lo it looks very it's nice. It's pretty. I like it. Huh? Sweet. Okay. So you guys go there. Um, uh, the Corsairs power down uh, non-essential things um, to try and make themselves as small a uh, blip as possible. And uh, they spend the next... Um, I don't know. Someone roll me a d6. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. I've I did it. Enough. Oh, never mind. We're <laughs> good. Okay, six days. Um, given that amount of time, Xavier and Talavac. Uh huh. Uh, well, actually, I should. I well, let me ask this first. Talavac, uh, you guys are going to be um, unless of course you choose to do different. You guys are going to be sitting quiet like this for about six days. What would Talavac be doing? Would he be manning the tactical station? Would he be out somewhere doing other things? Um, he would be uh, in his time. He'd be to keep an eye on the sensors okay. and be within earshot, you know, and be within like running range. Running range. But other than that, he would probably be in his room practicing his uh, sword techniques. Okay. Um. Okay. Then I'm gonna say Xavier, roll me a uh -huh. read sensory equipment check. You got it, homie. I succeed by six. All right. At about day three... May I um, I'm sorry? May I interject? Sure. Because I want to do something on day one. Sure, by all means. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Lucas is going to approach, approach Isaac. Yes? Hey. Uh, hey. I kind of need to test something. What? You want... I need to test some pies. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to throw a pie at you. Okay, are they going to hurt? Besides it just splatting particularly hard against you. No. Yes. So these aren't the acidic pies I saw you throw before. Oh, no, no. Which through uh, somebody's uh, body just, armor. Just the silly kinds, the ones that don't. Um, do any... They're, they're made from whipped cream and pie. Oh. Ch -ch sure. I guess. Okay. Good. Uh, what I want you to do is stand on one side of the ship, and I'll stand on the other side of the ship and see how far the sucker goes. Isaac will look at you very strangely and go, Okay. Okay. And uh, if you want, you can dodge... Uh, I just more of just trying to test uh, length. Okay. Ugh, excuse me. Well, by the way, thank you for the chocolate. I don't think I did that yet. Did I? It's good chocolate. And then he walks out of the room. <laughs> wow. Wow, Lucas is strange. I'm not human. What am I saying? What was that? Strange. Huh? What? You gotta. You gonna throw the pies yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, how long is the ship? Ooh, let me actually get that statistical data. It should be right here. Ish. Um, 100 feet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna throw it. Okay. Let me double, triple, quadruple check this. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh... So there's that. <laughs> I would like to dodge. So I'm going right. to dodge. You yeah. get a negative six penalty. <laughs> All right. 
I dodge. As it swir it actually cruises at a moderately fast speed down the hallway, and it actually looks like it is curving towards you, unlike most pies you've seen. Because it seems to be off its mark, and it tries to fly directly at your face, but you just manage to dodge out of the way and splat against the back of Xavier's chair. Hmm? <laughs> Lucas threw a pie at me. Yeah, I can see that as he okay. um, brings his finger to some of the mushy pie that's on his chair now. <laughs> it's whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides it being a fairly large thumb, nothing particularly has happened. <laughs> okay. Uh... Looks like it uh, is whatever. Uh, it's farther than whatever the ship length is. Mm. How long is this? Hundred feet. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I might need a larger testing area. All right, carry on, folks. Uh, pie will go away on its own. Okay. Have fun. And I think that'll be that. Yeah. Yeah. Squee. I'm here. On day three, what happens? Uh, well, I should. It was wrong of me to say. I should ask. Does anyone want to do anything during the first three days that has not already had pies thrown at? No, no, I'm good. I have a question. Is That's my nice. mm -hmm. gauntlet or my um, gun case finished? Ooh. Um, sure. Three days of uh, of uh, sitting around, not much to do. Yeah, uh, your gauntlets are finished. Sweet. Hart will uh, deliver them to you. Uh, or personally. So, um, she would say that uh, it works mostly. And, what do you mean uh, mostly? She, still, she, <laughs> she says, well, I know you said you wanted it so that it would shock both you and the user. Mm -hmm. Well, every once in a while, in a great while, if you don't hit it right, or if you know it's a bit finicky technology, sometimes the feedback loop could double in on itself and just kind of hit the user twice as hard. But it's rare; it's very rare. Okay. I, uh, you, 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 you would have to roll a one. <laughs> yeah. So. I see. If you roll a one with these, it will not affect them and it'll affect you double which really doesn't mean much to you yeah um, sweet so after about three days of sitting quiet you have yet to hear anything from the Naruni uh, Xavier uh huh you okay you already rolled uh says read sensor check um I did I see device six you did you start to pick up a small energy reading. Um, it's too faint at on day three to pinpoint its source, but it's coming from somewhere okay. in the nebula. Okay. And it appears to be stationary. Okay. Is it uh, is it the approximate size of a ship? Um, at the moment, all you can tell is that it is something that is emitting or or uh, energy. Uh, okay. The energy is. Um, greater than what you would expect from a ship, which is why your sensor is picking it up, even though it is at uh, quite some distance, though you can't pinpoint how far or where yet. Um, and that's all my read sensory equipment uh, skill tells me, eh? Okie yes. dokie. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm going to just keep an eye on it and see if it moves. Okay. Um, over the course of the next three days, it does not move, but it grows slowly but steadily. 
to Why? the point where you can pinpoint exactly where it is. It's about um, three squares away from you. It is, um, hang on a second. It is in this square up here, if you can see that ping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's in that square up there. Um, it's kind of strange. You can tell that it looks like uh, a ship uh, of wolf in design. Uh, and uh, when I say that, Wolfins don't have um, their own um, galactic society or whatnot. They're usually part of one of the other, the transgalactic or the free worlds. But they do have their own ships manufactured on their planets, and the signatures come up as a Wolfin manufactured ship. Um, it is quite unusual that it is emitting this much energy. But it is there, and it has been stationary for the past three days. And it is also one of the uh, the ship is one of the participants in the the rounds. Mm -hmm. Xavier will let people know about this, and he'll tap to the screen at the large glowing uh, dot on the sensor suite, and he'll say, "That, my friends, is a trap if I've ever seen one." Yeah. We zoom in. Enhance. Okay. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> click, 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 click. click. <laughs> Enhance. Click, 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 click. Um, sensors don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I was like, what? <laughs> it's just right here. Look, <laughs> this is the data. This is the data that we're getting. Um, uh, Xavier says, if I were a guessing man, and I am, I'm guessing that they're doing something to their ship to really create a high energy signal to attract competitors to them. Speaking I have of, a feeling... Mm -hmm. uh, did we get any signal that anybody like turned in any stuff? Other than the Ninja Bros? Yeah. Oh. We know that the other guys did. My, my bad as a GM. Thank you, Biff. Yes, um, after two days, actually, you would have received a uh, broad transmission, much like the first one. It says, attention all participants, the Naruni ship has arrived at Hoplay Station with a gold and jade dragon. There are now uh, two of each kind left. Good luck. Xavier will, uh, when that happens, so we're, we're still living in the past now, yes, though. Yes, yes. When that happens, Xavier's going to pass both data packets over to um, a Talavac, and he's going to say, "Can you compare those two and see if they're the exact same signal?" Well, let's. This... I just crack my knuckles. Let's have a look, see. Because we're thinking one of them is fake, and now that we know one of them is authentic, we'd be able to tell the difference. All right, now hop in the chair, get on the computer, and. Uh... And see if uh, compare their signals. I mean, I know that's a nutshell of a way to say it, but that's what I want to do. Um, give me a break hacking. it down to its ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me a, a hacking because I think that skill will be greatly utilized in this regard. Okay, my hacking is fifty. <laughs> <laughs> my hacking. Well, I'll, I'll give you the choice. You could use okay. computer operation as well, but a uh -huh. success with hacking will give you more information. No. Uh, so it's up to you. Not to hell with it. I'm going to go for the hacking. Okay. Damn it! And I would have made my computer, too. These dice, these, 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 these dice don't like me. Well, how, uh, what's your hacking? 50. I missed by 15. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that uh, you would have made a computer operations check. Given what you're doing, it makes sense that even if you fail to, ha to, to hack it, you still would get a lot of information from it. Okay. You can pinpoint that this comes from the same source. Um, you can pinpoint that this uh, is encoded in the same way. Okay. Uh, but but that's, that's all. That's all. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll relay that back. I'm like, well, they're they're coded the same, but I can't see any. I can't I can't tell. That's all. I, that's all I can get from this. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was worth a shot. Well, everything's anyway. worth a shot. 
my vote is to not take that little wolfy bait until we uh, until we know for sure the Naruni aren't coming back. All right. Um, so, is there anything anyone would like to do between day three and day six? Something specific to role play? No, I'm good. No, nah, would just do just random things around the ship. You know what I'm saying? Like you'd beat your house or something. You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um. Uh, I guess. I would. Yes. Um. So we have. Three J dragons. Uh, yes, technically. Yeah. Three J yeah. dragons. Um. So, Lucas is actually just gonna set them all down, like on on the. Uh, he's gonna be in the the gaming room. He's just gonna set them all down on the table. Uh, and just kind of look at all of them and just kind of go. Either one of these things is fake or sums up. I do not trust those ninja. <laughs> he's going to be bros. like, he's going to be like tapping them to to see if they like make different sounds and like weighing them in in each hand, going like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell at least from um, the tests that you run on it, uh, mm -hmm. they look exactly and feel exactly identical, with the exception of the coordinates etched on the bottom. Yeah. Are all the, the coordinates different? Yes. Hmm. Those are where everyone started in the nebula when this began. Right. So those ninja bros are full of shit. Very likely. Yeah. Or there's a fifth one floating out there, which doesn't make much sense, but it's a possibility. Oh. Maybe that's a game changer. Maybe it is out there. I have a question. Was it specifically in the rules to have every single crewmate on board your ship? GM? Um, Xavier thinks back. Waiting for God to tell him. Well, well, <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to... You know what? Uh, guys, you can roll an IQ check. To see, um, so okay, I forget. Inferno, we, when we want to remember something, you usually have us do something. I forget. What yeah. It is. So what is is that you 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 can do skill checks based on abilities, right? Mm -hmm. The best way to do it is um, you use a multiple depending on the ease of it, right? So if it's really easy, you say take your stat times it by five and then roll under that, right? Mm -hmm. And the less the multiple, the harder the check is, right? The harder the thing to remember is, right? So like if it's really hard, you don't, you don't like if you want like say for example my IQ is 15, right? If you want to make it really hard, you just say just roll against the thing, and I have to get under 15, right? <clears throat> so typically times five is, is yeah. Let's just do it that way because um, this, mm -hmm. this isn't something that would be hard to remember, I think. Uh, so uh -huh. everyone who wants to just uh, times your IQ by five and roll under it. Okay. So... All right. I fail. <laughs> so much for uh, rolling under a seventy-five. Jesus. I succeeded by fifty-eight. Okay, so Lucas and um, Isaac would both remember that uh, there is no rules specifically stated that uh, all of the crew has to be on the ship in the nebula. Very likely, it's. I'm. I'm thinking that one of the Ninja Bros crew van. Um, is still on the station and broadcasting that. Because if they are like Lucas says, they don't want to be known to be out still, um, that would make the most sense. Mm, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. All right, um... So anything else before day six? Mm -mm. Not for me. No, not in particular, no. Okay. All right. Uh, we've been doing this a lot, but uh, I like to leave this up to chance. I need someone to roll me a D100, and this time choose high or low. There right. we go. There we go. All right. Who wants to roll it? I'll do it. I choose yeah. low. 
Okay. Fail. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. So on day six, you get another broad range transmission from the same source that says, Attention all remaining participants. The crew of the Yagrat has been uh, has forfeit the match. They have left the nebula with their golden dragon and have been dropped out of the runnings to become a hunter. There are now two green dragons and one golden dragon left in play. Good luck. Is that uh, anomaly still in the... Uh... Yes, it is. Also... Okay. Savior, roll me mm -hmm. uh, another sensor check, and Talavac, roll me a computer usage check. Got it. Two by eighteen. Okay. Yes, I do it okay. by at least twenty. You guys notice this time, attached very subtly, but kind of piggybacking off of that signal, is another signal. Aha. <clears throat> uh -huh. Uh, it doesn't take long for you to decode it, and when you decode it, it is a message from the Naruni ambassador. Ah. Uh, it says, I hope that you get this. Not only were we not allowed to participate back and join you in the nebula, but we are not supposed to provide you any aid now that we have arrived here. I have attached this to a general transmission in hopes that you receive it. The uh, crew of the Jackal arrived before us and, from what we can tell, have a whole jade and golden dragon, though we know that can't be right. It is not a simple ruse. Whatever they have done, they have managed to find another one or create a very convincing fake. We will see what we can do from here, but unfortunately, we are not going to be much use to you out there. Well, we hope that you have good fortune and that we see you in the next round. Be careful. Oh, great. Well, Isaac throws up so his you... goddamn hands and goes, yeah. fuck. <laughs> well, no, let's not worry then. We're still in good shape because there are only two jade dragons, even though we have three, and only one other gold. We have two ships, the wolf and have one. We'll either intimidate them to drop their gold dragon, or we'll blast it out of them. I say, let's go. Uh, well, I don't see any of the alternative yet. How's our shields looking? Your shields are fully repaired. And the uh, the Corsairs will tell you that their sensors are up to uh, well, about 90%. They're pretty good to go. The only thing I wish I had were missiles, but we'll just have to make do. Okay. <laughs> So my suggestion is that the Corsair ships hang back a little bit, mm -hmm. and we get we engage our stealth drive mm -hmm. and get as close as we can to the anomaly uh, before we get within detection range, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, see what we can see, and uh, if we can't see anything, or, well, no, just see what we can see. Yeah, yeah. And then go from there. Sound good to everybody? Not, but I'm good. Mm -hmm. How are you, Lucas? Would you like to do this? To do what? Fly the ship? I love to fly the ship. <laughs> no, <laughs> only I fly the ship. You don't know how to fly the ship. I'm going to double check no, the I Corsairs, don't. make sure it's fine by them. Uh -huh. The Corsairs are all for it. All right, let's do that then. All right, one more We've to go. have been sitting around for too long anyway. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> How do I do this? Okay, so you guys, um, so if I understand correctly, you guys are going to jump into the square outside of detection range and engage uh -huh. stealth drive to get close to the 5,000 mile marker. Yes. Got it. Yes. And then assess the situation from there. Yep. So That's you're correct. going to hop in. I mean, we want the Corsairs to be much further back because what's the point of us having stealth drive if they can be detected, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, I think they have a stealth drive too. I could be wrong, but... They do, actually. Yeah. Oh. Well, then never mind. Okay, so uh, do you want them up with you? Sure. If yeah, if they're cloaked too, yeah. Okay. 
So um, you guys approach to uh, about just outside of 5,000 miles, and um, I'm not going to even make you re do a read sensory equipment check because it is apparent. Um, now that you are very close to it, it is the darndest thing, Xavier. It looks... Uh -huh. The readout shows that their weapons are charged, but their weapons uh -huh. are charged to such an extent that... Um, it, it is charged to an extreme extent. A ship does not normally generate this kind of power from the engines, much less from its weapon systems. Hmm. They're about to explode. I wonder if ah. they got sabotaged. Maybe. Maybe it's sabotage. Maybe they're... Hmm. Maybe they just want one really good shot. See, I was going to say that, then I realized how crazy that sounds. How close do we have to be before we can open up communications with them? Can't we send a radio signal 5,000 miles away? Oh, absolutely. However, it's going to reveal your location. I don't know if their sh weapons have a range of 5,000 miles. It might be worth a shot. Uh, any movement at all? Anything? Are they just sitting there glowing like an ember? They are just sitting there glowing like an ember. Oh, you see, here's the thing. Here's the thing on this. We've been looking at this thing for at least four days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if this thing was going to have a meltdown, it would have had a meltdown already. This is still a trap. True, true. But why like, is Meltdowns this... don't take 72 hours to do, right? What, what, what I don't understand is if it's emitting that much power... Then how is it actually staying together? Huh. I don't know. A little of an engineering, Xavier says with a uh, smirk. Huh. Hmm. Oh. You know what I'm thinking? Mm hmm. Why don't we ask uh, Hart what her opinion mm -hmm. is? Yeah. Sure, we'll get a professional. Well, we'll ask Seamus, too. Yeah. We'll get yeah. a professional assessment on this. I was thinking Hart because of Paw, and she might be very familiar with Wolf in design. Sure, but why not ask both? Yeah, Two heads are better than both. one. Ask yeah. both. But that's why I suggested Hart over him. Okay, uh, so you want to call them up to the bridge? Yes. Yeah. Okay, they would both come to the bridge and uh, take a look at the readouts, and Hart would go, Huh. Hang on a second. And then she'll get in like close to the computer and she'll start typing some things. And Seamus is going to uh, start uh, messing on another terminal somewhere else. And she's going to go, I've seen this kind of weapon before. It's very rare. It is... Um, what's the word they use? The um, fragile cannon type of weapon? It has one shot of massive energy that would fry one of our ships to a crisp. But it requires enormous power. I don't know how they're powering such a thing. Um, and you see Seamus would say, wait, look at this. And uh, he points to the readout. The nebula, the very small gash of, of the nebula, it, the dispersed, seems to be slowly drawn towards the ship. And uh, Seamus says, I think somehow it's actually drawing in gases from the nebula to charge the weapon itself. It's ingenious. It would only work in a nebula. What kind but... of tech is this? Seamus shrugs and Hart uh, says, uh, well, not common tech. Uh, the Transgalactic Empire has been known to dabble in such things. The Naruni, I don't think they would have made it. They, uh, they like tech that's stable. This is not stable. Though it does seem fairly stable now. Xavier smiles and says, what's the arc of fire on their weapon? Um, Hart would look at it and go, well, it looks like it's just a solid laser beam. Uh, one shot, one kill, hit or miss kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Is it on a turret or a fixed position on their ship? Can you tell? I can't tell, but given how much they're Given how much they're betting on one shot, I would think it's safe to assume it's on some sort of turret. Uh-huh. 
turrets are typically on these woven ships. Are they on the top of the ship, the front of the ship, or the bottom of the ship? Hmm. Just depends. Much like our ship, there's turrets all over the place. It just matters which one they've modified. All right. Save your set. I got a question. Yeah. Can it fire other weapons while that's active? Hart would shrug. I, I wish I could tell you. Unfortunately, that weapon itself is creating such an energy draw that any other energy weapon systems would use would be like a spark next to a campfire. So, impossible to read, she says, holding up her hands. Yes, Isaac? I have an idea. Yeah? We already modified a few of the sensors to activate on delayed timers. What if we were to lay down a sensor and then move an uh, appropriate amount of um, distance away so that we're not on their sensors away? Then when it activates, boom, there's a signal. It might fire. There's its one shot. Well. We... Um, Squee, when we've been doing our... our um probe thing right mm -hmm. we haven't real have the probes been been emitting a signal that's similar to a ship signal or one uh, or a unique one like no it, it would it mm -hmm. would be easy at, at its base form it would be easy to tell that it is a probe oh oh okay Damn. well then there how we go. about we hook a laser to it to shoot <laughs> <laughs> well okay we would have a sensor that could shoot things. Because okay. this is going to be an offensive thing. It'll take action. It'll blow its wad. And then we can no. go in and we can kick their ass. Okay. Here's my suggestion. We, uh, this thing um, can only either, this turret can either be on the top of the ship, the bottom of the ship, or the front of the ship, right? If it wants a full 360 degree arc one direction, I'm going to say either top or bottom, which means we have to a 50-50 chance, but we got two ships. One takes the top, the other takes the bottom. The problem is, uh, so we're guaranteed to get to the ship, maybe blow out its engines, uh, fry its power, the whole thing, right? The problem is, is that our ships will have a 50-50 chance of actually facing that laser. So, we could, Xavier says, we could either take the, we could each have both ships be fully crewed and, you know, hope that we can survive such a blast or that they miss or that we dodge it. Or, Xavier says, we get into position with one ship. We set it on autopilot to drift, uh, to get, we set it on autopilot and we all board a, the other ship and uh, take it from another direction. That way, the one that gets blasted won't be manned. But... Lucas is jumping up and down. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, Lucas? Don't we still have Buffalo ship? No, they scuttled his ship. Uh, yeah, they blew it to uh, seven hells. Oh, we're not going to use our ship as bait. No. No, we're not. That is but... out, of, out oh. of the question. Well, here's the thing. One of our two ships have to, has to be bait, right? No, because, or... Oh. oh? Yeah. Um, if we get a small enough ship that's fast enough, we can force its hand... Um, the smallest, fastest ship out of the two. No, oh, I mean like a smaller ship, like um, like an escape pod or a fighter ship. Yeah. Say, so, remember what the other guy did, where he had like one big explosive on his thing, and he just kind of like flew at us. Why don't we do that? Mm-hmm. Because it either has to shoot it down or have it explode on it. Okay. Do the Corsair, Corsairs, do you have any fighters, fighter craft? <sighs> Unfortunately not. This ship could be equipped with them, but we didn't bring any with us. Uh -huh. can, you, can you call them in? Uh -huh. um, 
No, that's not exactly the way we, we... It doesn't work quite that way. I'm sorry. I would if we could. I don't think escape pods would be too fast. I just shrug my shoulders. Mm. Then we'd have to have an engine. Exactly. I don't know. I'll ask hard about it. Um, Hart would be thinking. She'd say, the danger, of course... Well, one of the dangers is that lasers normally have a, a certain effective range because the laser will disperse to a point where it's no longer damaging, but something of that range would probably... Something of that power would probably outrange anything but a long-range missile, which means that if you just charge towards it, it's going to get its shot off long before you do. But escape pod... So what are you saying? Make an escape pod look like it has... A torpedo on it? No, we'll actually have a torpedo on it. See, this is this is the thing. Since it has its one shot, if we actually have something suitable enough that it would be a large enough firepower to actually be a threat, if it's its only weapon, that might be able to... It might need to launch its one shot just to protect itself. Seamus nods slowly and he says, but it would have to have enough firepower to be an actual threat to the ship. Something that its normal turrets couldn't take out fast enough. Do we have anything with that kind of firepower? Uh, I don't think... We, I think we already used the majority of our missiles. Savior grins. No, well, how many missiles do we still have? And how many mm -hmm. of the missiles do the Corsairs have? We have zero. Okay. Corsairs, how many missiles do you have? Uh, give me a sec. I also have another idea. Okay, but let's just, let's finish up this okay. one first. All right, all right. Uh, idea. Da, 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 da. One pair of long-range missile tubes. Um, Twelve per two, but they used missiles in the fight. I don't remember. I know the Naruto used all theirs. I know you used all yours. I, I know the we used all of theirs, but they were very much inactive majority of the fight. Yeah, I don't think the Corsairs mm -hmm. used all theirs, so I would say, I know they used some of them. I'll say they have 12 missiles left, and they are medium range, armor piercing, 2d4 times 10. Xavier Gorenz, he says, why don't we strap them all to one escape pod and send it straight to their engines? They're going to have to shoot it down, or their engines are going to get a big boom. I like it. So what was your idea, Talavac? How about deception? How about we find uh, find a way to make them think something massive is coming their way? Fool their sensors. A ruse, if anything How like that. How do you suggest we do that? Hmm. Well, with my expertise in hacking and computers... I want to try to find a way I could actually project something. I know it's far-fetched um, even for this, but... No, here's the only problem with that, Talavac. Uh, First yeah. of all, I think we have to get close enough for you to hack them. Second of all, when, when you start hacking, wouldn't there be a chance of them detecting us and then just shooting at us then? Okay, look. These are, these are honest questions. I'm not well, too sure. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I just thought I just thought that a ruse would help, but then of course you have the uh, getting the proximity problem. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard. Oh, we we have a great ruse idea. A ruse of hey, shoot down this slowly puttering uh, life pod of death. We'll call it a death pod. In hopes and, that they uh, use their big gun. On yeah. Worst comes to worst, we're just down the missiles that we weren't able to use in one life pod. Hard holds up a hand. Uh, guys, I was just doing some calculations. Not sure that'd be enough. If we launch the missiles, assuming they all do maximum damage, they might take down the shields, maybe even do some damage to the hull, uh, but it wouldn't be enough to blow up even one of our ships or theirs. It. Uh, she shrugs. I mean... Of course, nothing says they know that. I'm just letting you know, I don't think it's enough firepower to be life-threatening to them. <laughs> you just said the operative word. They might not know. You know what I... we should do? We should make missile-like things on there, but they'll be duds. They'll be empty. 
we'll, we'll have 12 real ones and like 20 fake ones, and they won't know the difference. Wow, there's your ruse. There's our ruse. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, question. So, two things. One, could a um, distress signal possibly be modified to, um, well, broadcast that it's this size ship, this yada, yada, yada? Heart would nod slowly. A distress signal could be programmed to, to transmit almost anything you want it to. Okay. Now, would it be powerful enough to fool the sensors? Probably not. It depends on what you're sending a distress signal from. The distress signal itself would have an ID that, that gives information as to what ship is sending it. However, of course, the, the source of the distress signal can also be picked up on sensors and it would have to match the distress signal for it to be viable. Well, how would it be even possible for um, possibly the Corsair ship and our ship to move the rotting hulk that was the Splagorth ship, because it is fucking huge, um, all the way over to here and launch it in a ballistic trajectory so that it would force them to use their their one charge? Or would that be a bad idea? Heart kind of looks around, and uh, Seamus goes, "I, that would, that'd be impossible. How would you get it through faster than light travel?" And Heart goes, "Well," and then she slowly grins. There might be a way. I'll lean in. <laughs> Do tell. Yeah. Well, like Seamus said, you can't move a big hulking wreck through faster than light travel without some way of latching onto it. But there's nothing saying we couldn't maybe cut up a bunch of pieces, tie them to the ships, and assemble them here and launch it. I can't guarantee it would work, but it's the only way we'd be able to have a chance of doing what you're suggesting. Do we remember if we actually blew up their engines? Yeah, the those things exploded. Ship. The entire ship is 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 large chunks of metal. It's just chunks, okay. Hmm. So you're saying go back, salvage a bunch of metal, and make our own ship, our decoy ship, out from scratch? How how long would that take? Hart does some math in her head. A few days, at least. The more people we have welding, the less time. And that's how many more days left do we have in this competition, Squee? Uh, there is no time limit. It's oh. until there are winners. So we're going to have to take another chance that these guys stay right there. Of course they are. Yeah. Well, we'll be right here keeping an eye on them. Mm. Well, one of our ships should be here keeping an eye on them. And the second they drop their guard, or uh, I suggest the Corsairs stay here and keep an eye on them. Mm. Because they have their special little laser communication. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the receiver. They can let us know as soon as they power down their weapons and start moving someplace else. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about slingshotting on a projectile at them at the speed of light? No, not at the speed of light. Uh, um, at the sp We're going to get a whole bunch of metal parts mm -hmm. from there, go back to this quadrant, assemble it, and then just use momentum to shift it. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, to throw okay. it towards them. Okay. So there'll be no faster than light travel with, with wreckage. Gotcha. And uh, I like that idea quite a bit, actually. We have that at the front while us and the Corsairs move into the back. Let's do that. I think that's yeah. the best of both worlds. Well, and the Corsairs get to save their missiles. All right. Well, let's just start patching it together. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I am to understand correctly, <laughs> I love uh -huh. just throwing problems at you guys and seeing how you handle them. Um, uh -huh. You guys are going to leave the Corsair ship here to monitor. You're going to go back to the Splagorth wreckage and salvage mm -hmm. as much metal as you can. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so you can you're in stealth drive, so they don't haven't detected you. Obviously, you can travel back to where the Splagorth is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, let's see. 
Hart would tell you that um, in order to fool their radars, you basically just need to recreate what the front of a Splagorth ship would look like. Yeah. Because you don't need to worry about the rest of it. The radar mm -hmm. would ping off the front. So yes. she says, in order to create enough metal to weld together and um, you know leave holes and gaps and just create the basic frame of what... Uh, the front of a Splagorth ship would basically look like, you would need to fill your cargo bay and uh, find a way to attach several large pieces to the outside of your ship. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Up to toe. It's fine. Yeah. Works for me. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get on this. Um. Yeah. So this is uh, salvage. Mm -hmm. Um. The the only thing is, of course, attaching large chunks of metal to the outside of your ship is not normally done, so you guys will have to MacGyver something. How you want to do it, up to you. Ropes. Uh, ideas, and I will, uh... I don't we know. have a MacGyver. Her name is Hart. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's our mechanic. I mean, she's our mechanic, right? Like, I don't have any mechanical skill. I have no idea how to, what we would use to attach something like that. I would, I would appease to the authority on it. Okay. Why not That's temporarily right. weld it to the hull? Mm. How the much time strong. do we need for that? You would need... She says to put together the frame, you'd need a few days. Again, depending on how many people get in EVA suits and go out there and weld. Um, to attach it to your ship... Let's see. Because you are right. Hard is a resource you brought for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... She would We're not, ask, we didn't bring her on board for her personality, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she would ask if you guys have... Um, there's these special emergency contraptions that kind of spray out a foam-like mega damage thing that's used as a sealant to repair hole breaches. Yeah, I could have sworn we had like two or three cans of we those. Do. Yeah, Those would work to temporarily hold to weld things to the ship basically you spray it down you press the metal against it and it solidifies you'd yeah. have to weld it back off but yeah yeah i have a question how long do we like so if we attach it all the stuff to the ship where are we where are we like going to move it to back to the quadrant with the uh with the wolf and ship and the corsairs yeah. way out of range of their um their radar, even yeah, without like ten thousand feet away. I mean, ten thousand yeah. miles away instead of the five thousand miles away. So yeah. it's like we're putting a mask on our ship. No, no, no. It's it's just gonna be a mask. It's gonna be a floating hulk. That's we're gonna pretend to be a splagorth, and then we're gonna shoot it towards the uh, the wolfen ship. I'm just trying to figure out where the attached to the ship part comes into play. Because we have to we have to transport it through faster right. than light. From here to here. Uh, okay. Yeah, and our ship's yeah. cargo bay is too small to have to put in all the all the metal. So that's why you know, like if you have um, a car and there's not enough room on the trunk, so you strap something to the roof. That's yeah. kind of what we're doing uh, right now. Basically, yeah. yeah. And then they're gonna unstrap it and then weld it together in that quadrant to oh, look okay. like the front of a splitter yeah. ship. What um, is the time between those two squadrons? Um, okay. I would say, well, Fair call an correctly, it was two hours. Uh, well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two hours in, if, 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 sure. do you mean to I just travel know. time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just travel two time hours. would be two hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, depend here's an important question. How many people are suiting up in EVAs to drag metal and weld onto the Well, the since I have the ability and we just need to keep the, the ship, um, you know, stationary, I can do it. That's okay. no problem. I have so no skills that can attribute can do it as to well. that. Uh, Isaac, what? Sorry? I have no skills that can attribute to that at all. Okay. Talavac, I believe, do you have EVA? I know you don't have zero-G movement. Do you have EVA? No, I do not. Okay. I'll have to do everything in ship. Lucas? No, oh, yeah. I, I got the sweetest skills besides any sort of welding. <laughs> sweetest skills. Well, luckily you won't really need a welding skill because you're basically just going to be laying down foam and pressing things together till they solidify. Um, like super glue. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my god, we, it's mecha damage super glue. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, four of you 
it would take a day to get it onto the ship. Um, and then if you get back there and have the Corsairs help you, uh, another day and a half to weld it together into the shape Wait. of the frame. Mm -hmm. um, Squee, how much cubic feet? We have 20 cubic feet of super spray sealant. How much do we use? All of it? Yeah, I'm going to say uh, use all of it. Okay. All right. Um, so, how's this beauty look? Well, um, I'm, um, I'm no, 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 I'm just trying to think of is there anything because you guys aren't on, under duress or anything. You're not trying to do this when people no. are shooting at you. Uh -huh. You can take your time. Um, I tell you what, Lucas and, and Xavier, roll me a EVA suit check, and this will kind of determine how long this Sweet. takes. My skill get my my class gave me a bonus to piloting check, so that's kind of neat. Uh, so my EVA is a sixty-five. Oh, wow. legendary! Oh, so, legendary uh, success! Oh wow! <laughs> you did it all yourself. Perfectly. Okay, I was. You know what? If I wasn't a smuggler, I should have been a salvager. Yeah. Uh, so EVA. EVA. Uh, yeah. Damn. Okay. All right. So not only does it take about 12 hours to weld everything on there, Savior, while mm -hmm. you're out there dragging pieces of the wreckage and the whole uh, I'm liking across... where this sentence is starting. I like this. I like this. Go on. <laughs> you come across. Shut up, Inferno. Let him speak. <laughs> a, uh, a piece of the wreckage, which is a part of the outside hole, and on the inside of the hole is attached a um, control panel that is still flickering with light. And you can see that this is a navigational control panel for the Splugworth ship. That if you program it correctly, it can dis it can um, transmit the ship's ID, Ooh. meaning that not only would their would would their radar pick up something in the form of a Splagorth if you put it together, it would also be transmitting a Splagorth ID. Dude, I I, I, I I happily bring aboard what I found. <laughs> Needle in the haystack, but. This, this I think, is going to help us a lot. I just put my hands on your shoulders and shake you all around. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yep. After about this is going to work. Hours, <laughs> after about 12 hours, the Starluck, now looking somewhat... Uh, um, very metal. Encumbered. Yeah, yeah very <laughs> steampunkish. Yeah. Um, fast travels back another two hours to the Quadrant. Um, meets back up with the Corsairs. And then I'm not going to make you guys roll another check again, but uh, we'll say it takes about a day and a half for you guys to <laughs> weld the ship together. Now, I just need... Well, no, no. You're 5,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have an injury thing. I was going to have you guys roll a check to uh, make sure their radar doesn't pick up the Splugworth ship, but if a frame was all it needed, there's no way a stealth drive could work, because the whole point of a stealth drive is it can... It, it conceals your emissions. So something at 5,000 yeah. miles that has no emissions should not be picked well, up. Besides, we yeah. didn't want to assemble it right at 5,000 miles. We right. wanted to do a, a bit further back anyway. But so, I, I still, I'm, still, I'm still following your logic, though. We're cool. So the two days or so that it takes to put this plan together, the, uh, the ship has stopped gaining in energy but has not moved at all. Um, you are successfully able <laughs> to... Um, <laughs> It's, it's, it's weird. To look at it, it doesn't look much like a split in front of a ship uh, because there's lots of parts missing. There's uh, pieces here, pieces there welded together, but there's big chunks and holes. But from a radar's perspective, it does resemble the size and basic shape of the front of a split ship. And when Xavier reattaches the control panel to submit a, 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 a split ID signal, you have created yourself a fairly convincing uh, fake Splagorth ship. 
<laughs> now, what I would like to do is, uh, after I'm done attaching that, I just want to quickly take a little welder, and on the side of the frame, I want to christen this the uh, the USS. No, no, not USS. That's an American. I wouldn't know that. Um, um, TGS? No, or CCW. The uh, CCW surprise. <laughs> 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 the CCW dick in a box. <laughs> and then I'll get right. back into my ship. And all the Splagorth are now rolling in their graves because not only were they defeated by you, they are now helping you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's beautiful. I love her. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Okay. <laughs> so, um,. Let me look something. at your plan and then see if I have it right. Oh, go ahead, Burn. Um, while this is going on, I want to check up on that that lady that I saved oh. from the um Corsair ship. She is she is awake now. She's eating. She's drinking. Um, she cyber. I uh, know. You know what? Um, we we'll, we'll do it this way. If you inquire about it, Cyber Six would actually uh, tell you that she's doing okay, and then transfer um, you over to a small terminal where she gets to personally thank you, which she does with um, heartfelt, teary eyes. Cool. And uh, Cyber Six uh, mentions at some point uh, when she's not around to hear him, he goes, "I have never seen that girl cry before." That's new hmm. well glad she's doing okay she is and uh cyber six says she should be up and moving around in another few days yeah um so mcdreamy <laughs> um heart says that um the only thing you need now is a way to propel it towards the ship however she's confident that if the Corsairs are willing to give up their last 12 missiles, she could use the propulsion systems from them to move it at a uh, acceptable pace. It would be fairly slow, but nothing says Spagorth aren't just trying to be menacing. Um, mm -hmm. But you Perfect. could use the propulsion of the rockets to push the frame forward. Um, that works. And that yeah. way both us and the Corsair, Corsair ship can get into position on an, another edge of this end of the ship. Uh, Xavier is going to ask, Hey, Hart, if we wanted to take out the power of this ship, what should we go for? The engines? She um, nods, and she says, Most power plants it, are from the engines, since most weapon systems are powered by the, nuclear, the same nuclear reactor that powers the engines. So you take out the engines... I can't guarantee you'll knock out the weapon systems, but that's the best chance you've got. Good. The other chance, the of course, Xavier is to says... just... hmm? Oh, sorry. She mm -hmm. said the other chance, uh, the other option, of course, is just to destroy all their turrets. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xavier will say, "Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think ourselves and the Corsair Corsairs should um, get into position." right behind the ship and do what we do best, which is shoot the shit out of the engines of these guys while our Splagorth friends come, you know, act as our bait. We pound them in the ass. Yes, we pound <laughs> them in the ass. Okay. And then in character, Xavier will wonder if Splagorth have asses, just yeah. to bring the whole conversation <laughs> full circle. Uh... <laughs> oh. I'm classy. All right. I say let's do this shit. Lose class, okay. Can I ask? Can I ask Carter if she can program Ride of the Valkyries into the Splagorth? <laughs> <laughs> Have that broadcast over the comms. Da -da 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 -da. Um, actually, Hart will <laughs> grin from ear to ear and uh, accommodate such a request. Oh, sweet. And she says, nice. and she says, and she actually says. You know, Xavier, I thought you were just mm -hmm. an old grump. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> old? Maybe you're not just... <laughs> <Xavier says. laughs> you're an old, old human? You're an old human, Xavier? 
No. Oh. I'm 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 quite I'm I'm young youngish for my age. Whatever, I'll take that as a compliment too. He says. <laughs> <laughs> young for Lower my age. Eyes. I shrug my shoulders. Whatever, humans. Uh, isn't that right, Isaac? Uh, humans, uh, right? Uh. What? Anywho. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so with stealth gaze, with stealth drives engaged. Um, I, I I've been thinking about this and. Um, from a logical mm -hmm. standpoint, you have your stealth drives engaged. They're not damaged. There's no reason why the ship should pick you up. There is no reason why I should have you guys roll, excuse me, for anything uh, up to the setup point because there's really, like I said, there's... We just do it. Exactly. Yeah. So you just do it. Yeah. Um, I think the missiles would have to be, um, well, it's hard. She would be able to trigger them with a... a, a well, she would probably do a timed release because obviously she okay. could trigger them with a signal however that signal might be picked up so the safest option is to simply <laughs> exactly. like, time it's like the ship might be like wait why did the signal come from the other side um so yeah we just calculate how much time is for us in the corsair ship to get into position and that's how much time um uh, she she sets it for maybe a little bit more just in case yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. okay so while I like to leave things up to chance, for the most part, I also like to... You're behave. a whore! <laughs> I, also, no, 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 I also like to behave logically. Uh -huh. I also like to behave logically. I don't um, think you're a whore. At most, you're just, you know, a slut. <laughs> loose. We'll just go with that loose. That's the kindest thing anyone. you have ever said to me. He gets no paid for anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Any time, bitch. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, I like to leave things up to chance, but I also like to be logical. I don't honestly think there's any chance that if a wolf in ship sees a Splagorth frame on radar approaching them with a Splagorth ID, that it is going to wait and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's have them fire at us first. <laughs> Especially knowing that the Spagorth would have one of the Jade Dragons, or at least thinking. So I'm not going to leave this up to chance. I'm going to do what any organic being that knows what the Spagorth are probably would do. Run. No. no. Hmm. It is Try again. Hmm. Um, you see from your sensors a bright, brilliant flash of blue laser light arc from the wolf and ship attached to something beyond your visual range and a bright explosion and on your mm -hmm. sensors in the radar you see the Splagorth front of the ship fly apart goodbye CCW surprise you served us well in your second life and, open fire <laughs> and as, as that, that explosion fades you see the wolf and ship's Energy drop down to normal parameters. All right. Pew yep. pew 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 pew. Yep. Um, and as that Cyber Six is on, he says, "Now, do we attack or do we try and make them see reason?" Uh, oh. Uh, how about this? How about we attack and try to make them see reason? <laughs> <laughs> Just, to show them. Just to show them that we need fucking business. Cyber Be six. the attacking part, and I'll do the talking part. <laughs> Cyber Six <laughs> cocks his head for a second, then tips his sombrero and says, "All right." So we're gonna beat them up for their lunch money. I got it. Yeah. All right, this is one crazy motherfucker. With Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Corsair ship starts uh, at full speed towards the Wolfen ship. Um, hey. We'll do similar and open up... No, actually, we'll open up comms. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, I'm going to speak in Wolfen 2, by the way. I'm going to speak okay. in their trade... Wait, uh, trade 3. Yep, trade 3. That's cool. With 90 that is proficiency cool. In that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so you open comms, and uh, after a moment, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's an answer. Ships. 
You have obviously seen what we have done to the Splagorth. Do not approach mm -hmm. us. Uh, we do it to you as well. No, no, you can't do that again. That was your one shot, and it wasn't even against the real Splagorth ship. We outthought you. So you have two options. You can fight and die, or you can jettison that gold jade, leave the competition, and still have your hides. And then um, Xavier is going to say some sort of wolfen passage, uh, maybe like an idiom or a parable uh, that the wolfen might have uh, when it comes to like not making a stupid deal, right? Okay. Like, don't look like like a wolf and equivalent of don't look a gift horse in a mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, roll me uh, intimidation check. Sure. I, I, it is I definitely have... not charm. Uh, <laughs> opening fire. I am intimidating them. I would have probably and tried I to. Rolled... Oh, I lose my two. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, infer. I mean, uh, burn. I would have tried to work in the fact that we took down the Splagorth. And that was just oh, a well. ruse. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, fair you... Enough. you hear... Um... Okay, here's what you hear. <laughs> I like to think maybe I fucked up the parable. <laughs> <laughs> Never look like, a horse what? gift this is what you mouse hear. water... Um... Don't... <laughs> Don't leave don't, a gift to a horse don't water. Don't gift a horse. <laughs> don't fuck the horse. Don't gift a horse when you're early to rise. <laughs> yes. yes. That's what I said. No, it's up to you what I said, but still. Um, you hear on the, uh, over the radio, your, your woven sayings are as bad as your threats, human. I, and you hear, Captain, What? Sir, censors. I don't care. We're wolfen. Captain. And then you hear like some growls and grunts, and then they're, 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 the transmission cuts off. They're having a moment, Xavier says. <laughs> After about a minute, you're hailed by the wolfen ship. And by this Hello. time, the Corsair ship has started pounding its shields. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus is mockingly in the back saying, poor captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, this transmission is actually a video transmission. Oh, okay. On the screen pops mm -hmm. up a young red-haired wolfen. Uh, oh. And next to him, crouched over a console, is what looks like a much older grizzled wolfen with a knife in his back. Oh. oh. And the young red-haired wolfen is wiping blood from its hands. You're the smart says, one. Is that your... <laughs> <laughs> he says, human, sometimes our kind, when they get to a certain age, f fail to remember what can truly be important, namely the lives of the crew. Call off mm. your dogs. It is clear that we cannot win against both of you. Xavier will um, communicate to the uh, Corsair ship and ask them to uh, cease their firing. The wolf and I are look, looking to reason. Before Xavier will then turn to the, to the vid screen and he'll say, I understand. When humans get older, they also have their own uh, failures as well. Just give us what we want and we will leave in peace. He nods, and he says, It is foolish to die over something you can try again. We exactly. will eject the dragon. We trust your word that you will let us go, as you will have no cause. But if you do choose to make this a fight, we will go down tooth and nail. Do not worry. We might be crafty, but we're not stupid. Why would we need to fight you and risk our own certain death when we'd already get what we want? Do your part of the deal, and so will we. And before we go, how does that saying go? He grins. And he says, 
Only a pup takes on a full-grown canther alone. Ah, uh, canther. Okay, thank you. Xavier <laughs> <laughs> will like <laughs> end communication even before he gets to say anything. Do not load that in the computer, Xavier. <laughs> I, I would have uh, sure. loved it. Okay. Loved it. If he just took out like a little notebook. Ah, oh, Canther scratches something out. <laughs> I do out. have a notebook. Xavier has a notebook. Uh, it's like, a great right? idea, Vern. You right? I'm going to write it down. I'm going to be like, oh, Canther puts yeah. the book back into his pocket. Okay, thanks. It's click. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Rayman. He always writes everything down. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, with that, uh, after a very short period of time, a small golden dragon is jettisoned from the airlock. The okay. wolfin immediately, the wolfin ship immediately starts to depart. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we will not open fire. At okay. least I, I won't. I hope my friends won't either. <laughs> no, no, they will not. God knows with Lucas, sometimes you gotta roll a d20. Oh, you know? oh those <laughs> friends! Yes, I have no control over those friends. <laughs> Uh, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Tooth uh, and nail. I'll shoot Lucas a cold, hard glare. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you with, like, the, come on. <laughs> Isaac will just shake his head. <laughs> oh, I haven't done anything in, like, a week. <laughs> <laughs> you can go get the dragon. Yeah, you can go get the dragon. <laughs> I can be in my natural habitat. Nothing. Space? <laughs> <laughs> Great. For a second, I thought you were going to say your natural ha habitat was like hot dogs. I know, but wouldn't that be boring, Lucas, having nothing? <laughs> well, at least you get to float around. Ah, uh, oh, well. Feet grabbing. Why do we Lucas even have know. on? Uh, <laughs> Little did Lucas know his natural habitat was golden dragons. <laughs> All right, so I'm pretty sure they're going to get away. We're going to get the golden dragon. And should we wrap up by getting to the station? Sure. Unless is there anything else anyone wants to do? No. No. Okay. no. Um, I would say that when you get the golden dragon, you can uh, connect it to your jade dragon or... <laughs> Any of your J dragons. Yeah, I'm gonna check all of them. Wait, 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 to wait. Be honest. <laughs> I want to ceremoniously get us together in the middle and connect it and hold it up and just yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. I want to see how full of shit those freaking ninja, the ninjas. Ninja I'll just call them the ninjas for now. <laughs> the ninjas. Yes. Sure. Let's see how full of shit they are. <laughs> Filthy. Well, Filthy. didn't they have a frat name like the Capathies or something? Yeah, the Capath yeah. Capathies or something. I don't know. That's some stupid name like that. Oh, yeah. hang on a second. Um... Beta. <laughs> Beta Kappa it Kappa. Is... Kappa Kappa Kappa. Yeah, it's Kappa Kappa the Kappa. Dumb heads. I think I also have it written down somewhere. I just have to find it again. Uh, maybe I have it written down. God knows I write enough stuff down. I sure as fuck Silver don't. Silver Rock. No, that's not right. Silver I'll Rock is... Oh, I know, I'm being facetious. Yeah. Hmm, I don't have it written down, believe it or not. I've actually been pretty good about that lately. Uh, uh, but I believe you're right. I think it's like Thy Capathator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um, Something. But yeah, so... um, w w w Well, I should ask at least... Uh, which mm -hmm. green dragon do you attach it to? Because there is one that is half charred. Ours. How about just the one, the one start, that we got? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. It fits perfectly. We know that one's good. And uh, as it does, the eyes sparkle, and they continue to sparkle. Um, yes, we did it! We can did I, it! like, deattach them now? or are they? Just no, transfer? actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you attach them, you can't even find the seam where they were joined. Oh. Huh. Hmm. It it's is almost as much if it like was with the Naruni one. It is as if someone took a full uh, figurine and uh -huh. simply painted it two different colors. Mm -hmm. oh Airtight. <laughs> How the hell did those ninjas do that? Then that is so crazy. Well, they're Why? magical ninjas. Oh, easy. We'll Sorry. find out. Yeah. I hopefully they found out too, and we find their carcasses oh. floating around. I just realized since the corsairs have no more interested in this, there's just going to be three people moving on to the next phase. Yeah. 
Us, us the ninjas, ninjas and, and the Naruni. Yep. Yeah. And then Naruni like us because we save their bacon. Yeah. So um, we should probably say our goodbyes to the Corsairs. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yes, we, we should. Can, we can save that until next. Uh... Oh, okay. Next session, because they're going to they're go back to Hot PlayStation with you anyway. They want to make sure that round two is done before they feel like they've achieved their obligations. Okay. Hey, Squee. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been wanting to ask you this. Now, you, you don't have to tell me now if you, if you don't have it, but um, what is the name of the Corsair ship? They have not told you. Okay. Because, I mean, I would, I would like to know for a future reference. Uh, would Talavac ask them? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I didn't know if they left already, but yeah, I'd ask them. It's like, uh, I'm no. wondering this, uh, what is the name of your ship? Cyber Six smiles and he says, well. <laughs> Second, I got you, I got you, bro, I got you, I got no, you. No, 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 actually, actually, no, I'm actually going to have to say no. For a simple reason that, um. Corsair's units are named after their ship, and since... Okay, I'm just going to go out of game here. Uh -huh. Since I actually have a Corsair campaign going, and I want to give those players freedom uh -huh. into how that name and what it is and all that stuff, I don't want to make that choice for them. In other words, uh -huh. I would rather the players choose how the names are called and what they go by than me make a choice right here. So we'll say they tell you, but I'm... I don't know. We'll call it... He, you no, know, no, saying, no. I, have a perfect, I have a perfect way of doing this. Uh -huh. Well, there's our call sign, which the ship shares, but I personally like to call it Tisha. Okay. That'll work. That's a name I felt from it. Cyber 6 will oh, nod to Lucas and tip his sombrero. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll go, where, where, go. where is yours? Hmm? He tips his sombrero again. Oh, the sombrero. I think I uh, threw it uh, down the hallway to just see how far it went one day. I believe it's probably still there. Let me go get it. <laughs> it is. Baby says, I almost tripped on it on the way down. I and, got uh, it. <laughs> with that, we'll end the session here, and then uh, next session we'll start on Hot PlayStation, where we figure out who moves on to round three. Sweet. Dun 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 dun. Uh, hey. Ta da! So that in the session proper, we'll stream for a few more minutes. Uh, but, I uh, will stop yeah. recording. Have fun. Bye bye. Hi. Bye -bye.